What's up everybody, it's me, Retrovin, and we're ending off our Spyro Reignited Trilogy review with Spyro Year of the Dragon. I'm very excited to do this one because I, I don't want to spoil it, but Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon is better than Ripto's Rage, in my opinion. I know, very controversial opinion. I'll explain why in this review. So, let's get on with it. He starts off with the dragons and Hunter, for some reason, sleeping in the dragon realms. Eventually, this evil bunny girl and some other people come in and take all the eggs. Um, and they have to get Spyro to go through to these uh, outer worlds that they went into. Now, the reason only Spyro and Hunter are able to get through is because, really, the bigger dragons aren't able to fit into the hole. I know. <laughs> a very interesting plot line. And basically, these eggs are being stolen because the um, the sorceress, who's the main villain of this one, wants the eggs for her own doing. It's eventually later found out that the sorceress actually wants to kill them. And that makes the bunny girl turn good and say, hey, you know, maybe I should join the good guys and help them. And then that's when they kind of get, like, on their final stretch and, you know, there's like a weird love plot line between Hunter and the the bunny girl. That, that for some reason happened. But uh, aside from that, once they get to the end, you know, Spyro fights the sorceress, the uh, the bunny girl helps him, and uh, that that's really how the plot goes. There's not a ton to it. It's just your basic Spyro story. It's not as detailed as Ripto's Rage, but it really didn't need to be super detailed, I think. I do like the, um, the lore within it, though, where it talks about how the dragons were once part of this world and how... You know, they fled years ago, and because of that, the magic is slowly withering away. And that's why Spire has to get the dragon eggs, because it explains why the dragon, I guess, essence, or just, like, a dragon's presence, makes the portals better. Which is cool. It, it actually makes sense to why it does it, aside from just, like, the orbs or other things that would help Spyro get to certain locations. Anyways, though, with the story out of the way, let's uh, get on with the rest of it. In Year of the Dragon, you have the same basic moveset as the other two, as I always say. You have your jump, you have your glide, you have your flame, you have your charge. You have all the basic stuff that you would see in a Spyro game. Um, and also the roll. The dodge roll is a thing. A nice thing that they added to Spyro 3 that most sequels don't do is they gave him back all the power-ups that he unlocked in the previous game, which means you don't have to re-unlock them. Uh, a weird thing, though, that this game does have is it involves uh, animal caging. And basically, the reason I say that is because there are animals that are caged in the game by Moneybags, who, yes, he's back and he's a cheap bastard. And now, you know, like, you have to go talk to Moneybags and you have to pay him gems to save people like Sheila the Kangaroo. And, you know, this is the part where the review is going to get controversial, because I'm about to say why I like these levels uh, that have all these various different characters, because there's about four different playable characters. The uh, first character you have is Sheila the Kangaroo. She can bounce up in the air, and she has a really fucking powerful kick. So basically, she could kick enemies, and she could do big jumps. I really like it, because it's a nice little change up to the platforming. And she doesn't overstay her welcome, because she's not in a ton of parts of the game, which is why I don't have a super big deal with the extra characters, because they just end up being used in mostly optional sections, and each character only has one level of their own. So yeah, Sheila does her jump, she does her kick, she um, has to help her friends in her level, which is pretty cool. The next character we have, Bird, who most of the time is pretty good. The only time he was um, ever really annoying was in this tower level where you had to fly around and search for a bunch of stuff, but aside from that, you're usually using him in more contained areas, which I like. He's he's better suited for that, even though I know he's a flying character, so you wouldn't think that, but it works, because it gives you a nice little area to fly around and shoot enemies, and I don't mind it. It plays well. I, I don't mind Sergeant Bird. Not as good as uh, Sheila the Kangaroo, but still a pretty okay character to play as 90% of the time. Or a character that I despise with every fiber of my being in this game. Bentley... The... the Yeti. Now, in the original version of Year of the Dragon, I, I also don't like him, because his gameplay is pretty stiff. Now, the character himself is pretty cool. I don't mind that. His gameplay is where I have an issue. And the Reignited Trilogy doesn't really help, because they put him in, like, a weird, ugly side view that I don't like. Because I, I like to have my character somewhere in the middle, rather than, 
you know, at like the very edge inside of it. I think they did it so that he can aim at stuff, but it really didn't help too much in my opinion and makes Bentley the weakest character in the game in my eyes at least. Because his gameplay is also stiff at that. You just slam, you jump, and you do the spin. He, I don't like it very much. Here we have his Agent 9, who on the opposite side, I do not like him as a character. He's pretty annoying. But I like his gameplay because it kind of parallels a certain other franchise Insomniac went on to do. And uh, particularly in the Reignited trilogy, they actually really fixed his gameplay. And you know, I still prefer Year of the Dragon, but I, I will admit Agent 9 was a bit stiff on the original PS1 version. One big thing the Reignited trilogy did was fix Agent 9 because his gameplay is more suited towards your, you know, modern third person shooter like a Ratchet and Clank. There is one more playable character, Sparks, and his levels are okay. They're basically like top-down shooters where you go through various different levels like Crawdad Farms. I probably didn't like it when I played the game, but honestly, going back to it, I kind of like Sparks' levels. They got like an arcade feel to them, and I, I enjoyed them. I might not have enjoyed them if it was on the original game, but what the Reignited Trilogy version, which I'm reviewing, has has a pretty decent gameplay feel to it, and it doesn't feel too stiff, honestly. So I have the Speedways, which are back with a Vengeance, and this time, not only do you have the regular time attack, but you also have races, which I don't really like all that much, but yeah, again, like most of the game, it's pretty optional, so I'm not too upset about it, but that is a noticeable thing that I don't think they should have added. You still have the side paths that you can do in Spyro 2, so for the most part, they're not super unchanged, and once you finish a level, you know, same thing as Spyro 2 and 1, you get to, um, you know, basically go back and beat your best time, and I really like the speedways in this game even more than the second one, because the environments, again, continue to be more and more varied. You have Honeycomb Speedway, you have, uh, like, one with a bunch of butterflies and dandelions. It's really cool. I like all the different environments, and I guess it's a good segue into um, me talking about the game environments. The best they've ever been. They brought back some of the medieval feel of Spyro 1 with some more mystical sort of elements, but they also kept the weird feel of Spyro 2. So for Spyro 3, I'd say it's kind of a mix of the two. So they brought back a little bit of Spyro 1 with some Spyro 2 mixed in, which I like. Not only do they have that, but they also have environments like Bamboo Terrace, which has sort of a, I guess, Asian-Japanese architecture kind of feel to it, which is really cool. And that just goes to show, like, the different variety of environments. You have ice levels, you have um, a dojo level, so many cool things, like Fireworks Factory. I love them all, and it's even more varied than the first two. The only complaint I do have, and it's definitely worth mentioning, is that you don't have the intro and outro cutscenes, which is probably the second thing that this game has that Spyro 2 did better. Uh, although, that's probably the only thing that I would argue Spyro 2 really did better than 3. Uh, but with those out of the way, mostly Spyro 3 does improve on different things, and uh, we'll get on to the next part. ...which is more than the second game and much more levels, but it also has more bosses. So, and you know, instead of the three, you have four, and each boss, again, has its own feel to it. I'd argue just a little more in Ripto's Rage. Not a ton more, but it's slightly more varied, and... You know, again, the bosses are also very solid, unlike Spyro 1. Um, you basically fight, you know, each boss based on, like, you know, different characters you get, because even though they don't have the uh, intro cutscenes and the outro cutscenes like they had in the Spyro 2 levels, you still have some interaction with the different people that you meet in worlds. In fact, in each hub world, you have to get each character to help you with something, whether it's, you know, getting a balloon down, helping with a rocket ship. So you still have some interaction with them because they all help you in the end once you go through every world. You know, once you get enough dragon eggs too, I believe. There are a few cool extras you get after defeating the sorceress. One of them being you could finally get your money back from that cheap bastard money bags who, again, also gets your money throughout the game. And you get all the money you paid him back at the end, and that is the most satisfying thing ever. You also get another Sparks level, which is cool. And if you 100% the game, you can unlock um, something similar to Nasty's loot, where you go through the Sorceress's um, sort of gauntlet area, and you have to basically just get everything there, which is really cool. I, I like that part. I, I like a lot of parts of this game, for sure. 
The hubs are also varied along with Spyro 2 and how Spyro 1 was, so they didn't really change up too much in that regard. The game is absolutely phenomenal. It has a nice mix of the classic sort of Spyro tracks that you heard in the first and second game, with a more sort of electronic and technical theme, sort of mirroring what they were eventually going to be doing when they got further on, like with the new franchise. And I, I really want you guys to give it a listen, because a lot of these tracks are really good. Not even just good like Spyro 1 and 2. These are extraordinary. I love the electronic feel of them. Anyways, though, why don't you guys have a listen to some of them? That was my review of Spyro 3, Year of the Dragon, my personal favorite Spyro game. I hope that my uh, reasoning for why it was my favorite one was, you know, justified, and you guys not maybe not agreed with it, but understood why I think it's my favorite one. Anyways, though, that'll be about it for the review. If you guys have any game recommendations or any different games you'd like me to review, let me know. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next review, though, and I'm out. Peace.